Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I think uh, within five minutes, if I have to do the business, I'm going to skip the slides that we have prepared. And what I'm going to speak here is on behalf of uh, the team, uh, the panelists there, and the entire uh, uh, participants there uh, who did a great job. And the framework that we adopted was broadly the framework which the Prime Minister has elucidated in his opening inaugural address, that there are three parts that we need to look at availability, economic access, and the issue of absorption. And within these three parts, what are the economic levers that can change the food availability and access towards more and more of nutrition? And one key point that emerged out of that those countries which have been facing shortage of food, the first and highest priority is to increase the production of agriculture by giving incentives, investments, incentives, infrastructure. But once you have produced the food, the next big challenge is to store it well so that reduce the post-harvest losses. There are countries, as in India, large post-harvest losses in perishable commodities. And that requires all along the value chain a lot of investments in infrastructure. So that's what the marketing revolution even the Prime Minister talked about and you can use your taxation policies, you can use your price policies to incentivize the system there. On the issue of economic access was that growth is a necessary instrument that will augment the levels of income of the people but it may not be sufficient to take care of the deficiencies of certain types as far as the nutrition is concerned, so targeted interventions would be needed there. But also, augmenting income would be that only a few people can take full advantage of it. If there are people at the bottom who are left out from the growth process, if the growth process is not broad enough, then how do you take care of them? And we thought that the economic levers could be the conditional cash transfers to them rather than messing up with the pricing structures and pricing controls which will affect the efficiency and allocation of resources on the other hand. In terms of absorption, there are investments needed but there are issues which go beyond economic sphere, particularly on the education of the women and all that. Now, when we were looking at all these three, which are the best practices and case studies that we can cite of where you have given good availability, you have given good access, and it is nutritious food, then issues, one example that came up by the audience was Amul's story is a great success story. Amul's story in this country, which led to Operation Flood in due course, the milk revolution by the smallholders. It was very broad-based. It augmented the income of the people. It required investments all along. So those are the economic levers that you need to put in place. And it also improved the nutrition of the people because it's nutritious food. There was cases that if there are big companies like Nestle that are trying to give Cerelec, but the price is very high. It could be nutritious, but if it is not having economic access of the poor, how do you innovate a different product from your traditional mixtures and put a certification, quality certification, which can compete with these types of things? You can get your millets in place, you can get your other things which are nutritious, and traditionally we know which are those commodities, and you can do that, but it needs quality certification. Now, how do you do that? You do that by bridging the information gap between the producer and the consumer about what nutritious food is. And the last point that I would like to put in place is that the most sustainable solution, economic levers, the discussion came up would be those which are market friendly. Markets are not a panacea, but they have done better than many state interventions. So, if you want to scale up those experiments, you need to look at which foods would be market friendly. That means they are aligning with the consumption preferences of the people. And those foods, if you can innovate and get in right place, in right quantities, at right prices, through the incentive structures, then you are likely to succeed. 
Thank you very much. One second is left. Thank you. <laughs>